How did I build this all inside of one container? It's all been built with the power of Flex Container and just thinking a little bit out the box, but staying within the Flex box as well. Hey, don't forget to sign up for our YouTube channel if you want to get access to exclusive videos. And just to prove to you, the structure shows there is just one container for the Hero Banner. And I'm going to hide myself for a moment because we have a heading which is acting like a logo. You could have an image in the top left, WordPress menu in the top right. We have an icon box and then another one next door to it. The idea is, is that imagine this is your entire WordPress landing page. It's literally just one container. And then clicking this will take them off to other places in the website. And then we have a big heading at the bottom. So let me just show you how I managed to build this all out in one container. We've got a container. I go to style. It is currently got a background image. We've got full width, 100% width, and I've gone and made it 100 VH. So that is the full height and width. I've set the direction to be row because I have got some items side by side, and I've justified it to be to the end. If I had gone and centered it or put it at the start, you can see uh, the icon boxes have moved. Why did the header not move? Ah, that's because that is right aligned, so it wouldn't have moved either way. And then I've also gone and done some row wrapping because if I don't wrap, you're going to have all of the items squashing up against one another. Now, the thing I do want you to take note of, though, is that I have got space between over here. If you do top align, things would actually shoot to the top. Same with the middle or the end. Now, nothing moved at the moment because of something I did over here. And this will become clear in a very sneaky moment. So let's just focus on the container. There is zero margin and zero padding, even though you can see there is some padding around here. And I did that intentionally because I wanted to have this bit of a background overlay on the logo and the WordPress menu to make it be a little bit clearer, especially with the fact that we had an image. Sometimes when you're trying to do something like this and you've got bits of bright white in your image or maybe it's a similar color to your font, you've got to think very carefully about color contrast. When I go over to the heading, which is just a standard heading, by the way, please note I just stuck a heading in to imitate or be the logo. You could have dropped in an image as well. And what I'm going to show you for the background you could do within your image as well. So I go over to my advanced tab. I've gone and set the width to be 35%. And I've ensured it's 35% when you get to the mobile as well, because I felt that was sufficient to show the word Hunter when you eventually get down. Well, that's the logo Hunter when you do get to the mobile. But over here, if I just go and link these, you can see how we're able to move it away from the edges of the container. You do zero and it's now right up against it. We go for 25 and it moves it away. So you don't have to put padding on or inside the container. You could leave it as zero and then apply it to the items that sit inside. And that does shrink down to, I believe it goes down to 15. There you go when you get onto the mobile. So you can be quite prescriptive. On the background, this is where I added in a color. And this is a triple O, triple O, 4D. So it's black, but it's made quite transparent just so that you can see bits of the image behind the logo and the WordPress menu but the text in front of it or the text of the WordPress menu and the logo is still pretty clear. I mean, the same with the WordPress menu. Go and style out your menu however you want. 25 when you're on the desktop for the padding, 15 when you get to the mobile. And if I go to the background over here, again, we've got that same color feeding in. I mean, look, if I had made it be full on black, you can basically see what it's doing. And then we've got our two icon boxes. Now, I could have used a separate icon, but I wanted to have some descriptive text so that it made clear what the icon does because these do have links in them. So let's say this was like your services. It could be your portfolio. It's another way of having people land on your website and they don't need to scroll down to see what else is on there. Everything is on here. So imagine you get to the mobile. I mean, look, this is how it looks like on the mobile. Just to give you an idea, you got your logo, you got your menu, you got your descriptive text with your icons, and then you've got your other impact headline. And that's it. You can't scroll up and down, right? Everything is above the fold. So you, long as you preload, or maybe you don't even have a background image, you should be pretty good on page speed scores really by now. But when you land on here, you might have a really powerful image, a really powerful video, or even a slideshow, just something. There's no scroll up and down here. And then it might be bookers, one-to-one -one consultation, 
um, collaboration, um, go to the shop, contact me. Well, probably not contact me, but, you know, contact us to get your house designed. So it's another way of thinking of how I could build a website with a really simple landing page and that's it. But the icons and the links inside to take me somewhere else. Anyway, back to the desktop. And I should point out all of these uh, headings inside of it do have font clamp formulas as well. I'll pop a link in the video description for you to go and use my font clamp calculator. Seriously, if you want your fonts to be fluid typography when you go from desktop to tablet to mobile, without you second guessing what font size should it be, make sure you use a font clamp formula. But the extra thing I did to these icon boxes to make it sit the way I've currently got is I went into the advanced tab and I added in 400 padding and I'm going to show you the problem you would have had if you did not do this. So when I remove the top padding, can you now see that these are basically in the middle? And it's all to do with the way the wrap and alignment happens within a Flexbox container. It's one of those things that really does annoy me quite a bit. If we go over to the layout container, can you see that we're wrapping, obviously, and we've got space between? If I hit start, now do you see it shoots up? Now, it didn't earlier because I'd already put in my padding. I just wanted to show you the end result. But if I hadn't done that, that's my start. That's my middle. And look, everything now moves down. And I go to end, it goes down even more. That looks atrocious. Space around, space between. Sorry, space around, space evenly, space between. But these were a problem for me because they just sit there. Even if you go into each individual one and you say, no, align it to the bottom or the end, it won't do a thing. It really doesn't. So what I did was just add in 400 padding and it moved it further down. And that's the same value I had for the desktop as well. So by doing that, I was able to present my imagery in its full gloriness because maybe you've got a really powerful image and a lot of people tend to stick their impact headline over here. You have your call to action button. You might have another image over here or some other stuff going on. And maybe you want people to go and grab their bag essentials. Maybe you've got a shop and you're selling stuff to them, you know, e-commerce. And they might need to scroll down or go to another page. Whereas here I'm saying, look, here's the beauty of what you could see or what you could get or what this website's all about. You know, make sure your impact headline serves a purpose and tells them what the benefits are and what they could get out of it. What's the reward for them? And then these links are going to take them to where they need to go. I'm keeping it really, really simple as a landing page. What are your thoughts about this? And look, I see so many people building out Flexbox containers and they have like three or four child containers inside of there. And often I look at it and go, you didn't need that child container really if you thought about it a little bit. You know, if you want to reduce DOM and the amount of items that are being rendered, think out the box, but stay within the box. Hey, go and check out our guides and our course on our website. Link is in the video description. Don't forget to sign up and become a member of the YouTube channel. I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. I'll see you soon. Bye.